Hey, tribe of journeymen and women. Today is an episode that was long time coming, an episode of lessons I learned the hard way of me sharing my real life experiences, uh, the challenges I had and how those difficulties I overcame and achieved some cool successes in my life. And today the episode is going to be not necessarily all about Batman, but a lot of it is going to be about Batman because he has that character, that mythology has dramatically influenced my life. Uh, it inspired me and helped me when I was in really low times. And I will tell you all about it of what I consider that symbol to be, uh, why I personally believe so many people do love the character of Batman and how it actually literally changed and impacted my life. So if you're interested, stay tuned for this journey. Now, to get started, actually a quick note, look at this cup. This is a legendary cup, a limited edition of my first Aikido school. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. <laughs> but let's uh, head into the story. So, uh, first of all, uh, the story begins when I was in my teens. And it begins so because I grew up in a very difficult city, uh, which was full of crime. Sounds like Gotham, doesn't it? <laughs> so that's your first, if you're smart enough, that's your first clue to why I love the character of Batman. But that's a real story. I grew up in a city called Panevegis. It's the fifth biggest city of Lithuania, my home country. I'm actually right now in Panevegis, but this is like the outskirts of it where my parents live. I'm you know, visiting them here. But the city itself used to be a troublesome city. A lot of crime was happening, a lot of gang wars. Like sometimes there were shootouts in the street. Not anymore, trust me, it's all cool and calm. But the thing is, Lithuania used to be a Soviet country and when the Soviet Union fell apart in uh, 1989, that's when I was born. Uh, the country was becoming from a socialist country, communist country, it was turning into a... Um, how do you call that thing? The American thing, the American dream. I just lost my English word, capitalism and democracy. Capitalistic and democ democratical country. And when that shift was happening, uh, uh, later in my life, I had students who were uh, at the time policemen. So they told me they, that working as a policeman then was super rough too, because the laws were still just establishing. There was no solid police force and uh, a lot of gangs took advantage of that. So as I mentioned, there were literal gang wars uh, and uh, like shootouts in the streets. I never saw like a shootout myself, but I know that historically that was the thing while I was growing up. The difficult part for myself was that the younger generation, a lot of it was idolizing those criminals. And they were kind of, they were wannabes or, or growing into criminals to actually my childhood best friend, uh, who was my neighbor at the day, he actually was like a full-on criminal. And I saw him transform. Uh, he, you know, he, he was in a gang. I think eventually he formed a gang. He actually tried to include me in his crimes a lot of times. He was asking me like to spot him and so on. I never agreed, thank goodness, but, but it was tough to, to kind of always resist him wanting to pull me in, but, but that was happening in front of my eyes. You know, it was uh, gangs and crime was quite common, and as, as I mentioned, not only between adults, but also the younger generation. Now, the reason that's an important story, part of the story is, well, first of all, obviously, sounds like Gotham, doesn't it? But the other side is that I was a peaceful kid. I was kind of a hip, hip, hip hopster guy, you know, white pants and saggy, baggy pants and hat and whatnot. I don't think I'm going to find a picture of that. It's been too old now, but but I was like that kid, and we were a bunch of kids like that, forming together, drinking, smoking. I quit smoking when I was 13, but it doesn't matter anyway. But we were hanging out together, and uh, we were all, interestingly enough, we were all very kind of peaceful. We we're kind of creative bunch and peaceful kids, kind of pacifists. Not like officially pacifists, but but we weren't into violence. And the violent guys, the criminal guys, younger ones, they knew that. And they would come and literally hunt us. 
they would steal our mobile mobile phones they would steal our money sometimes they would beat up my friends i was never beaten up i was once in trouble or more more than once I had to like physically defend myself story for another day i guess but but yeah i saw my friends beaten up and i had to, i had to help them sometimes i had to run away multiple times they were like you know it was shitty they used to call it the little chicago the city where i grew up because chicago at the day was really tough i guess too i don't know i think it's better now but i'm not an expert here but that being said i that's where i grew up and uh, eventually i started taking on martial arts specifically aikido bad choice but back in the day i thought that's the right choice but uh, i took it on to learn to protect my friends and i was learning martial arts and I was reading books to develop myself. And I always felt that urge. I always felt that desire to do something about it. I wanted to protect my friends. And I also, I also wanted to do something about that injustice. I wanted to, you know, there was that sense of, I want to fight crime or I want to do something about that crime fool of crime situation. And so I was always aspiring to that idea and I was troubled by it. Uh, but then, uh, if you watch the series, you might know some of the story parts, but I'll, I'll make sure to, to bring in the fresh ones, the new ones here. But part of it, the recurring one is that, uh, as I was, as my school was ending, we have 12 grades in Lithuania. I guess I was like 10th or 11th grade, I think 11th grade. So I was like 17, I guess I was in a really bad mood because in Lithuania, you have to study. Like nobody asks you, if you want to study, you have to study, even if you don't know what, it's kind of the, the culture. And I didn't know what I want to study because nothing was fitting me. Back in the mind, I knew my dream was to become a martial arts instructor, an Aikido instructor. But when everybody was pressuring me to study, that's kind of how I felt. I felt like I have to choose a university and nothing fitted me. And I started kind of feeling depressed. I couldn't sleep anymore because I was just so confused. Like, what should I do with my life? What should I, what path should I choose? And I was all thinking all about the terms of which thing should I study? And uh, so I was in that kind of depressing mode. And beforehand I was a very popular kid. I was very much out there. I kind of ditched the, the whole group of, you know, cool kids because drugs came in. Uh, and uh, I didn't want to do drugs and so I kind of drifted away from them and a lot of them went a bit further down the drug road than I wish they would they did but I kind of backed away from them and uh, I was popular in school I had friends and whatnot but but that depression side of me started to kick in and I kind of started to isolate myself and started keeping away from everyone and just thinking all the time like so what's the right thing for me in my life like what the fuck like how do I get out of this I was reading a lot of books, as I mentioned, like because I couldn't fall asleep, uh, I would instead take books and read them. I intuitively, intuitively, I realized that the more I will know, the more useful and valuable I become. And that was always important for me to serve others, to, to be valuable. And uh, so I would read books, like psychological books, self-help books, like everything. And I would, instead of sleeping, most of the times I read books. And in school, I realized you know, school is not really suiting my needs. So, so I started reading my own books at school, just under the table. It was kind of a cool idea, but, but that was like all, but I was feeling quite bad at the moment too. Like my mood was down. I, I had insomnia and I wasn't sure about what to do. And I was kind of, sometimes I would, I don't remember chron chronologically wise, like what kicked in first, but I was absolutely in a bad mood. And then, uh, in the back of my mind, I knew I wanted to become an Aikido martial arts instructor, but but that just feel, felt so, you know, impossible. Everybody told me, if I mentioned that idea, everybody told me I looked at my girlfriend walking my dog. Our dog. <laughs> so if I mentioned that idea to anyone about me wanting to become an Aikido instructor, everybody said, you're crazy, Rokas, this is stupid, nobody supported me, and that made me feel even worse. So it's kind of lost and confused. And then, interestingly enough, this is finally where Batman comes in. <laughs> interestingly enough, well, first of all, Batman wasn't my favorite character before. Uh, I kind of liked him always, but I didn't know much about him at all. I, beforehand, in my, in my early teens, childhood, I was a fan of Spider-Man, then Wolverine, 
few other characters, but Batman wasn't much on my radar. But then during those years, I think it was like 2008, I guess, Batman Begins came out, which is a film by Christopher Nolan, one of my favorite directors. Now, <laughs> back then I didn't know him. And interestingly enough, me and my brother, and Mr. Miter, here's a picture of my brother, here's my brother. We, one time we sat down to watch The Batman Begins as soon as it came out, and we kind of watched like a, I think an English version. And I didn't kind of catch most of the dialogue because it's kind of witty. You need to have good English, and my English was still developing the other day. And uh, I kind of watched it and I didn't get it so well. But then, uh, I think it was earlier, but anyway, so I watched it and it didn't caught up to me, which is super interesting to kind of realize, because again, Batman wasn't a big thing for me at the day. But then sometime later, again, I was in that depressed mode, and The Dark Knight came out, I think. And there was like only a bad version. It's a long story and, and well, okay, well, in Lithuania, we used to be all pirates. I mean, internet pirates. We would download everything through torrents because back in the day the economy was much weaker than outside of it so, so it was really expensive for us to buy stuff online so we would pirate stuff that's the truth and then I downloaded the Dark Knight the second part of the Batman Dark Knight trilogy I downloaded it and it was like crappy version so I decided you know what I'm gonna watch let's just take a moment and watch the first one again, whatever. I don't have anything better to do. And that was it. I turn on Batman Begins just by my own. And I think I downloaded a Lithuanian dub, so I really understood all the dialogue. And I was watching it alone at the middle of the day. And I was just blown away. I was like, holy crap. I was like, that's my story. <laughs> you know, like, no, obviously with all humility, humility, but I mean, I just resonated with it so bad, so, so, so deeply, I mean, well, because first of all, you know, we have Bruce Wayne, who's growing up in Gotham, a crime-ridden city, and he's exposed to crime at an early age, so I was like, I've been there, and he wants to do something about crime, but at that moment of my life, I was still, and in that moment where, in the movie, Bruce Wayne is lost and confused. You know, he doesn't know how to get there. He's kind of in a depressed mode. He's searching, doing his best, but it's not really working out. And I was like, that's me. Hey, hey, Batman, that's me. I know how you feel. You know, I was like that. And uh, so I really felt that that story, I could, I could relate with it. And then I would see the story of him not giving up and then discovering the Shadow League and then going even further than that and uh, eventually against all odds and favors he becomes the Batman. He finds his purpose and that really caught on to me. I was like, you know what? And that gave me that confidence and strength, that story, that narrative, that symbol that I need to be like that as well. I don't, I need to make sure I'm confused and lost at the moment as well but I need to make sure I don't give up. I continue, I, I pursue my purpose. I can do this. You know, if he did it, I can do it. Although it's, you know, I realized it's a movie, but still. And that inspired me so, so much. And later on, I started to uh, kind of get to go around and see like what, what's, what else is there with Batman. And that's when I started to learn about his mythology. I learned that the movie was, uh, Batman Begins, was highly inspired by a lot of graphic novels and the, the official narrative of Batman. Not only, you know, his parents being murdered at a young age, but there's also other cool moments of the story. So in particular, in the Batman mythology, which is kind of reflected in the movie, he goes and travels the world for seven years to learn from the best and to develop the skills necessary to fight crime and to, to become what he needs to be. And I realized, you know what, I'm going to do that too. Like, like that wasn't like the only source of inspiration for me, but, but that supported my idea of, you know what, fuck university. I want to be an Aikido instructor, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, I will, uh, go to a Jap I will go to an Aikido school, and I will work so hard until I become an instructor, and then I will come back to Gotham and open my Aikido school. 
And interesting enough, that's what I did. But but I'm gonna get there just in a moment. Coming back to me investing and learning about the mythology of Batman, there's a couple of graphic novels. I showed you that those before, and I won't spend much time this time. But there's Batman Year One, a really incredible graphic novel where he um, where he, they show how he tries to become Batman and he fails in the beginning. Then at his older age, how he struggles as well. But no, nevertheless, he overcomes all the odds. And uh, that idea of devoting yourself entirely to your purpose, uh, kind of being what I, what I like to call one-pointed, discovering what you need to do and completely committing to it, I, I realized that's the essence of Batman. And in one interview with Christopher Nolan, the director of the Dark Knight trilogy, he mentions that, super, uh, Superman, <laughs> that uh, Batman's superpower is his uh, incredible discipline and I thought you know what I want that too I want to also devote myself so hard and so much to my path and learn everything I can about it so that I would achieve my purpose and that became for me the symbol of Batman and to this day I think that's that's partly why people are inspired about him because Batman is all about being entirely devoted to your purpose, like excluding everything else, living your life all just about that. And I realized I want to do that too. I want to become the best version of myself that I can in order to embody and fulfill my purpose. And interestingly enough, uh, already I kind of did that. Now I really want to do it much more on a bigger, bigger level. But to reflect back to the story and actually relate it to the movie again, if you, if you know my story, you already know that uh, I did skip on university. I didn't go to university and instead I went to Switzerland to an Aikido uh, school, Aikido Yoga Meditation School, where I lived for three years and trained. But it was, what was funny is that Switzerland, obviously you know that Switzerland has mountains, right? And then my Aikido instructor, uh, we would sometimes vis visit his place, visit his house, and he lived in the mountains. And he had like this wooden house, traditional Swiss, Swiss house called the chalet. And downstairs in the basement, he has a dojo, a small dojo. Uh, that's where I used to sleep together with other Uchideshis, living students. And, uh, and one day, like one of the first days, I'm taking a walk across the mountains. And I look for them, and this is, these are like snowy mountains, really beautiful. There's a valley, and I'm living in a, literally living, you know, in a martial arts school, sleeping on traditional Japanese tatamis, and I'm like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> this is it. I'm being the Batman. This is like, I'm, I'm living that. I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm, I'm following the path of the Batman. I, I felt like I'm just repeating his story. Unconsciously, I mean, no, no, not that I tried to, but it's just kind of falling into place like that, and that was just so cool for me. Because I already went through that depressed, depressed, lost and confused mode, and now I'm in the second stage of finding that school, which is going to make me into a man, you know? It was just so cool to realize that that, that was like, you know, this is kind of reflecting of that moment in the movie. And the next step was me coming back to Lithuania, a.k.a. Gotham, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne comes back to Gotham. And that was even more cool. I was like, holy shit, you know, I'm, I'm doing this. Now, when I look back and I reflect, I did a lot of good. I, I, I think it's important that I kind of recognize that. There's a lot of people inspired and I used to go to schools. I still so do and talk to kids. Sometimes about bullying, sometimes just inspiring them and trying to motivate them because my, my own life was difficult at that period. So I, want, I wanted to make sure that I support kids who are going through the same since I kind of went out of it myself. And yeah, I did some stuff. I had policemen, you know, in my dojo. I did my best to, you know, support them and give them tools that I hopefully they were you know, useful. I couldn't say I directly fought crime, you know, or that I made like a huge difference in that level. Hopefully I will. I do have some ideas and you know, this journey, there's maybe still things to come. But yeah, that was kind of an incredible 
full circle of me being exposed to the story of Batman and it literally inspiring me to, to do something similar. And up to this day, just kind of slowly wrapping up, uh, up to this day, I, um, I still uh, admire the symbol of Batman and sometimes I do have difficult times. I, I oftentimes take on really big challenges, including this journey. And that creates adversity, that creates difficulties, and, and people again start to doubt when I, you know, I'm doing the right thing. And that's when I fall back to Batman, to this symbol, to this symbology, and I ask myself, you know, what would Batman do in this scenario? Or I just look at that symbol, that's why I put him on my desktop often off, off enough, and I have a tattoo, I actually have two tattoos. And I thought I'm gonna show it to you on this video because I never officially introduce them so the first one is just a you know a batman uh on here like a dark knight symbol and the other one yes i will get half naked in front of you in front of the camera let's do this actually well not half naked i'll just take out my sleeve i guess it's a funny story as i'm showing you the tattoo um so uh I'll make it quick, but uh, I always thought that, um, I always told myself that I won't have a tattoo because there's nothing in my life that I could put on my body for per you know, permanently that I would be sure that my mind will never change about. Like even Aikido, if I would have made an Aikido tattoo, I'm not doing Aikido anymore. And then one day I realized, you know what, there is one thing. That will never, that my attitude will never change to. And that's Batman. And then I had, and then I had a tattoo, and then the next year I made one more. So, shit! That's the wrong shoulder. Holy crap. I guess I'm so used to being on the camera and then seeing myself on the opposite side that I thought it's the other shoulder. There you go. Batman in his fine mood. It was supposed to actually be a half sleeve with some other characters, actually, Son Goku. Kenshin, V for Vendetta, a story for another day, why, but yeah. So anyway, where, where was I? This is the last moment of the story, and sorry, I don't want to waste our time. I don't want to make this video too long, but what was it? Okay, so the symbol of Batman. I look at the symbol, and uh, it reminds me of all that narrative, of all that story, of all the, of the value of not giving up, going against all odds, not considering and not minding other people's opinions and just doing your thing, becoming the best possible version of yourself, becoming an embodiment of your purpose and living your purpose to the full potential. That's what Batman means to me and to this day, I did it for years and years now, but if I have a difficult time, if I have a low mood, I sometimes just turn on some graphic novel or take a graphic novel from Batman and just read it for some ideas, for some inspiration or just look at the picture or watch the movie again. And it's not like I don't, I'm not trying to make a <laughs> impression that I'm always in a down mood. Most times I'm in a very good mood, but sometimes I do have challenges. Sometimes I do have lows and the character of that man, that narrative motivates me, brings me back, brings back my spirit, brings back my faith and belief. And I know, you know, that this is like, it's a, it's, it's you no know, fake, but still, I think a lot of people invested a lot of thought and their hearts to creating that character, to creating those stories. And, um, and that's why I think it's a mythology. That's why I think it's a symbol, it's a symbolism. I know it's not real, but it reflects the deeper psyche of human beings. And I think it's worth listening to. I think that's, that's, that's why it's amazing that it exists. And that's why it's worth, yeah, just taking it into account, using it as a symbol of inspiration. And also to hopefully bring something like that to life. Not like dressing up and going fighting, fighting, trying, but becoming the best possible version of yourself, embodying your purpose and living your purpose to the fullest potential. I think that would be awesome. That's kind of what I'm aiming for myself and I wish and I hope more people will be inspired to do the same. Devote yourself completely to your purpose. Learn everything you can about it. Become a badass and do something about it what matters to you. That's what Batman is about for me. That's how Batman influenced my life. And uh, literally 
to a degree changed my life. It's the good. Hope you enjoyed the story. I'll talk to you in the next episode. And as always, keep questioning.